Let's go to the Word. I'm so excited that Jesus' sacrifice always means we're blessed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm always, I'm grateful that the closer we get to God, the better our lives are. I'm always grateful that some kind of way when God is doing what he's doing, even though we sinners and we don't have a lot of time for him and most of our money don't go to his causes, I'm just so grateful that whatever he does, he's doing it for us. Amen. Praise God that he's not selfish and self-centered and it's just not about worshiping him or praising him. But you cannot be God-given. The more you do for God, the more he's going to do for you and the more you're going to be able to do for his kingdom. Amen. So we talked about this on last week. I just, you know, 53, I don't remember the age that I realized this, but I remember just stopped wanting my wife to get better or my kids to get better. I stopped, you know, like praying about my money. And I just realized that everything gets better when I get better. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, We're going to go to resurrection, but I got to start here. I, I realize that nothing gets better when I say what my mama didn't do. <laughs> Amen. Nothing gets better when I say what, what my biological father, like, had he been that. Nothing gets better with me talking about him. Amen. I just realized nothing gets better, but, but every book I read, something happens. Every time I get in the Word, something happens. Every time I pray and ask God to change, everything. So I just realized that if I want things to get better, all I have to do is get better. Amen. Anybody have an area in your life that you want to get better? Anybody got an area in your life? you just like, God, I wish it would get better. I promise y'all. I remember going to God about Jada. It's like, God, I'm just not really, like, this ain't what I thought, like, when she was younger, but then when she got to high school, I was just like, God, this don't look like I thought father and daughter would look like. He was like, oh, okay, good. Then what you want to do about it? Because you already told me about it, but what do you want to do about it? Like, how serious are you about the, it getting better? And I was like, Lord, I'm super serious about it. Like, it just don't look the way I think it should look. And, well, how would you want it to look? I was like, this is how I want it to look. He said, okay, good. Then let's go. Let's get better. I was like, oh, okay, what you want me to do? He's like, well, I gave you an assessment. Go study it. Like, she did the assessment. Her numbers are there. Go study her numbers. And so as I started studying my daughter and I started realizing like, oh, okay, I got it. Yep, she can be extroverted, but she's really an introvert who's extroverted. Got it. Makes sense, God. So so I'm looking for her to have this energy every day. And God is like, no, that's not how she built. At some point, she does not get charged by being around people. So she can be extroverted, but she don't get charged being around. So the more she's around people, the less charged she is. So, you're, so you see what she is, and you think that's her dominant. That's not. So because she's introverted, when she has to go away to get charged, you taking it personal. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. I, can I teach? Is it okay for me to teach? So God said, if you want something better, you got to get better. You can't just want a better relationship with your daughter without understanding your daughter. See, the, the challenge with your son is it comes natural because y'all both have the same personality. So you don't have to study him because you are him. So you don't, you don't got to figure out what makes him tick. What makes him tick is what make you tick. But your daughter is an introvert who becomes an extrovert. So you're going to have to study that because you're not, a, as a matter of fact, you get charged being around people. She does not. And so I was like, all right, God, I got it. And so as I, as I begin to study, man, I'm just so, man, I'm telling you, I'm so excited. We talked about, uh, we're going to talk about this later, but we talked about the trip. You know, uh, Didi was like, okay, we're going to Disney World. You know, Didi a boss. So Didi was like, okay, I need you to do this when you get there. You to get, I said, we just going to have fun. No, we ain't going to have fun. This is what we're going to do. I need your spirits this way. I'm going to need you to do this. I'm going to need you to do that. Right? I'm just being real. And so God was like, as you deal with Jada, you're going to have to do this and you're going to have to do that. You see Jalen, ah, Jalen, like, what up, what up? We pound and hug, whatever. Jada ain't necessarily like, it's not that she has anything against you, but Jada is more guarded. So Jada ain't the one to be just hugging and kissing and like, that ain't her swag. Right? She's like a mama. It don't mean Didi don't hug, but that's not her like natural thing. And so God was like, you got to pay attention to when she needs her space, you give her space. But what you're doing is when, because you want to, you putting that on her when that's not what she wants. 
And so as I begin to make the adjustment, I'm just telling y'all, we went to Disney World, y'all. I can't tell you the last time with any of them, we've had disagreements or arguments. And God was like, the reason why you had disagreements and arguments with them is because you wanted them to be a certain way when that's not who they are. And you wanted to love them the way you wanted to love them, but not the way they want to be loved. So you got to figure out how they're wired and then you love them the way they wired and you ain't going to never have no problem. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. So all of the stress was coming from me trying to love her in the way I'm wired. And so God said, oh no, you got, I already gave you the solution when I gave you the assessment. You just don't want to study. You think just because y'all all in the same house, it's just supposed to by osmosis, everything just supposed to happen and it don't work like that. But if you're willing to put some work in, and I promise y'all, we at Disney, man, we had a great time. Jalen, um, flight end up, you know, everybody know flights, right? So we end up leaving and go, uh, coming back, everybody together in the airport for a few minutes, right? And we were just talking about how much fun we had. It was no whatever. And Jalen and Jalen stayed in the same room and didn't have no problem. I'm like, I had to coach Jalen up like, yo, bro, I'm trying to tell you, if you keep doing this, this is going to happen. And so God says, everything in your life is going to get better when you get better. Stop praying for stuff to get better and pray for you to get better. Yeah. I'm just saying, some of y'all, you don't need a better relationship. You just need to stop tripping when you call and they don't answer. And now you in your head about why they didn't answer. And so now you didn't made up a reason why they didn't. And now the devil kill is still and destroying because you didn't say the reason why they didn't call me back was nobody told you that was why they didn't call you back. My boy just hit me the other day. E, I called you a couple of times. You didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on. I said, I ain't know what's going on. I did 30-day challenge, and I was on the phone for 30 days praying with folk, and I was tired of being on the phone. <laughs> so I cut my phone off. It wasn't nothing personal. And I said, and I knew when I cut it off, some of the people that I wanted to talk to, I, was, they, I wasn't going to be able to talk to them, and they was going to take it personal. And some of the people I didn't want to talk to, I wasn't going to have to worry about talking to them. But I knew it was going to be some casualties. It was going to be some people who I wanted to talk to, but they didn't know that you had to call me a few times to get to me. But people were making up why I didn't call them. I said, bro, that ain't had nothing to do with nothing. I was tired of being on the phone. I needed a break. It had nothing to do with you personally. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I just want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. So, so what God is saying is that everything around us will get better. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It's a formula. When you get better, Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I behaved as a child. But when I became, Paul is telling you, I got better. We're not just talking about God and Christ. And we're not talking about, just, you know, uh, uh, when he coming back and Pharisees sat. No, Paul said, listen, you got to understand, there was a time in my life before Christ, I was in the church. I was reading the Bible. I was killing people. I was murdering uh, uh, men. I was murdering women. I was murdering children. When I was a child, but when I became, everything gets better when you get better. You cannot expect God to do anything different in your life if you're the same version that you were five, ten years ago. You can't ask that your marriage be better if you're not a better husband. You can't ask your marriage to get better if you're not a better wife. You can't ask that your relationship with your children get better if you're not a better parent. If you're the same version but you're going harder, nothing's going to change. God was like, your daughter ain't got nothing against you. You just, I called Jay like, Jaylen, I'm going out of town tomorrow, bro. You good? Jay like, I'm good. Jalen is good. He like bump class. He in college. He don't care. Dad, where you going? Oh, I'm there. Bro, you packed that quick. I've been packed. I, I, I was ready to take a trip. I've been packed. Let's go. I called Jada. Jada, can you go with me? She's like, nope, I can't go. And I'm going, she don't want to go with me. God said, yeah, she don't want to go with you. She really takes school serious. So she's not interested in missing class. Had you told her 30 days in advance, she would have said, yes, you can't ask her 24 hours before. You can't ask her 48 hours before. So you're thinking she don't want to go. She does want to go. She just needs to get prepared. Just because you don't need to get, oh, I'm not talking to anybody. We're going to go to the next slide. I just want you to stop praying and get better because there are some things you're praying about that you don't need to be praying about. You just need to get better. You still God, can you have, he said, stop praying, get better. <laughs> get better. 
You, I already gave you money. You don't need no more. You're not doing right with what I gave you. Get better. Go take some classes on finances. Go take some tax classes. Get better. You don't have to give the IRS all your money. You can open up a foundation and you can use your money to help the community get better. But you can't get you can't get better, son, if you don't. Son, you need an accountant and a CPA. You need a bookkeeper, son. You need to study. You don't know where your money, you, can, you don't need more money. Stop praying for it. You need to get more information about money so you can, get, you can do more with what I already gave you. I already gave you enough money, son, to have as much as you want, but you can't get no more because you're not doing right by it. Praise God. Am I talking to anybody? Just want to go back and we're going to go forward. The Macintosh Portable 1989 laptop. Boy, that's what you had to carry around right there. Amen. That was it right there. You had to carry that around. That was a laptop right there. Yeah. Imagine you taking that on the plane. You probably wouldn't get through TSA. Hey man, let's go to the next one. We're about to get into the message. Yeah. MacBook Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Can somebody get Carl the mic? Somebody get Carl to mic. I'm about to ask us a computer question. I don't want to mess it up too bad. Somebody get Carl the mic for me, please. Uh, the Mac Pro, you can take this on the plane with you. This is lightweight. It's a 2024 laptop, 128 gigabytes of RAM, 128,000 times the 1989 version. <laughs> hey, man, this is a special day. This is a special time, All right? This is a special day. This is a special time. This is, this, is, this is the time, amen, this is the time where we not only recognize the life, the sacrifice, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this is the weekend we understand like, oh, okay, we got to pause and we got to get everything we can possibly get out of this moment. There was a reason why Jesus did it. The reason why he did it was that there was, that you, it was impossible for your circumstance to change. There was no, you couldn't do anything to change your circumstance. There was no, there was no way out of what you were in. Hey Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You've been there before where you felt like your, your circumstance wasn't going. I remember being homeless and like, man, God, this is my second winter homeless. Like, this ain't about to never end. You know what I'm talking about when you get that feeling of, shoot, this ain't, I don't know how I got myself in this. I don't know how I'm going to get myself out. Like, I might be doomed for this lifestyle forever. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody know it. Somebody in the room know what I'm talking about. You've been in a situation that you knew physically you couldn't get yourself out of. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I remember hope. I don't know if anybody else needed it. Amen. But today is about hope. Amen. I needed some hope. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The first year homeless, like, that was an accident. Now we the second one. I'm like, yeah, this is about to become a habit. Like, ain't, my circumstance ain't changed. Like, this is it. And I remember a revival. And when Pastor Willis did that revival, and he talked about Jesus Christ, and I didn't go up front because of no Jesus Christ. I went up front because I needed my circumstances to be changed. Hey, man, I'm just being honest. Some of y'all might be holier than thou. I wasn't going up just to give my life to Christ. I was like, oh, he could do what? <laughs> he could change my circumstance. Like, I don't got to be homeless no more. I'm like, let's go. And I'm telling y'all, months after going to church, getting baptized and giving my life to Christ, I got my GED out of nowhere, and I was headed to Huntsville, Alabama. I'm telling you, for me, when you talk Jesus Christ, you talk hope. When you talk Jesus Christ, you talk about things can be changed. When you talk about Jesus Christ, you talk about a reset. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that the 1986 version and the 2024 version of Eric Thomas ain't the same in no category. I ain't talking about in two of them. I'm talking about in no category. Me and Didi get up in the morning and have worship and we both go like, yo, how are we still together? I'm just being real. Like, we, we, this will be 34 years of marriage, not together. And we still get up and go like, yo, this can't be nothing but God. Like, it ain't, it's not even possible. Like, we don't even like, we ain't, we ain't even built like that. We don't even come from that. Like, we're not waking up in the morning on something like, oh, we just got it going on. We just communicate effectively. <laughs> Like, we were just made for each other. We getting up looking at each other like, yo, you definitely ain't me, and I'm definitely not you. Like, we got two total different personalities. We got two different worldviews. Like, yo, we ain't, we ain't, we might be both from Detroit, but we ain't, we ain't nothing alike. How in the world did you? 
We ain't the Huxtables, y'all. We not the Cleavers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't leave it to Beaver. Every day I get up, like, thank you, Jesus. It was because of your life, your death, and your resurrection that I have hope to do something that on my own I couldn't pull off. I couldn't pull this off on my own. And you thinking the longer we together and the more money we have and the more success we get, no, that's what makes it worse. Every time I grow and every time she grow, we could be going in different directions. It's nothing but the glue of God that keeps us together. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm trying to tell you, today is about hope. Today is about a reset. Now, I wanted Carl to get on the mic. Let's go to the next one. I want to show y'all something. Uh, if you've ever, you know, used a computer before, a computer is not perfect. There's errors. And so when you have these glitches, there are two things you have to do. You, you either have to do a restart, which is simple. You just push the button and restart, and maybe that will fix it. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You, your, your screen was frozen, something happened, and you restarted it. Sometimes the glitch is so bad, the errors are so bad, you got to do a full reset. Yeah. Praise God, I'm talking to somebody today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. I don't know if you caught it, amen. But Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection puts us in a situation that at any given time, we have the ability to reset. Yes, yes, now, some of y'all just need a restart, but when you come from where I come from, you sometimes, you just throughout the year, you need a reset. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. You just need a whole reset. Amen. I'm going to read it to you. Just as we reset our computers to correct errors and glitches, do me a favor. Stop seeing glitches in your life and errors in your life and stop acting like you don't see them. That's the hope in Christ. When you was in the world, you got to fake the funk, for real. When you're in the world, you can't always be transparent because it could be to your demise. But when you're in Christ, you don't have to act like you didn't do what you did and you're not who you are. Uh, mm. Praise God. I'm I don't know who I'm talking to on that one. I don't know who need to hear that one. Listen to me very closely. When I was younger, I'd be like, I ain't like my daddy. I ain't like my sons. I ain't like my, I'm just like them. I'll go to God and say, God, I'm just like, oh, I'm them. I'm not better than. We're the same. We come from the same on my mama's side, on my daddy's side. I got the same stuff they got. I'm just asking God in some of the ways that some of the stuff they got, they use properly. Some of the stuff they got, they didn't use properly. I'm asking the stuff that we didn't use properly for generation after generation, help me to use it properly. But I'm not playing no more, acting like I'm not them. I, I need a reset because some of the stuff I was taught, some of the stuff I was trained on, some of the stuff in my DNA, it is an error, it is an, a, it's a glitch, fix it. Yes, sir. So I don't make excuses for why it took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. I know exactly why it took me so long. I know exactly why it took me so long. I, 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 no excuses for why I used to be arguing with my wife. There's no excuse that, well, where I come from, we, no excuses. You know exactly why you did it. You need to stop doing it. Look, you cannot fix something that you don't think is broke. And it does not benefit you to lie to yourself about your errors and your glitches. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to feel bad about it. You were born in sin and shaped. But Jesus came so that we don't have to keep talking about the 1989 version and we can become through his life, through his death, through his sacrifice, through his resurrection, we can become the best version or the best model we can possibly be at this particular time in our lives. I want you to ask yourself that question. Are you the best version that you could possibly be? And if not, why not? I get so tired as a pastor when I hear people talk. It's, she ain't doing this and he ain't doing that. What are you doing to, to grow? What are you doing to get better? You're not going to be judged with them. You're not going to be standing next to them. What are you doing to get you better? What are you doing to be a better version of you? The better version is out. Hey Amen. I got embarrassed again yesterday. We call our AT&T rep, our iPhone dude. This is my guy. And my wife said, look, we got some challenges. I can't text. I can't get videos. I can't get nothing. I said, bro, let me holler at her, fix it for her. He said, uh, well, she said, Eric phone don't never do that. My man was like, oh, he got the terabyte. And I was like, oh, Lord. I, I ain't even know. He was like, he ain't gonna never have no problem. Every time he get a phone, he get the terabyte. But you got the. 
And I was like, oh, no, bro. I thought we got the same phone. He said, yeah, she got the 13 when you got the 13. But, but, but you got the, she got the. He said, what I can do is I can send you the, I can send you the 15 now with the terabyte. And you ain't going to never have that problem again. I can upgrade you. We have a different version out right now, and you could get more space. Am I talking to anybody? You keep praying for stuff. All you need to do is be the better version of you, the latest version of you, and you got the capacity to do all the stuff you try to do. You just can't do it with the, with the model you have. Yeah. Hey, E, if I could go back. Thank you. Because you kept saying my name and won't let me get in, so I'm just going to interrupt you for yes, 10 seconds you. real quick. Thank you. But that first verse, I want you guys to understand something. That says one megabyte of RAM, and I know a lot of people hear megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and you think storage. What he just talked about as a terabyte is storage. The megabyte of RAM is random. I mean, it's, it's the memory for the machine. And what that is, it's the processing. So it's the functionality of the computer to actually open Word, to open your programs. It's how the computer operates. So go to the next one. When you see 128 gigabytes of RAM, do you understand the power? That, like, that's not a small change. Again, this is not a terabyte of storage. Storage is just you can save your files. This is the processing power of the machine. So now I can open Adobe Premiere Pro. I could open, I'm talking about like Pro Tools, I could open Keynote, I could open Word, I could open, and all these programs open and function at the same time. I promise you, you can get one of them programs. You can open Premiere Pro with that first computer. Go back to the first one. Which you, this, let's say. you could not open the programs that we use on our phones with now this. on that computer. So I want people to understand, like you just see the numbers, you don't understand that, but that's, I'm talking about like insane improvement. So, so, so many of us are this version trying to open up. You're trying to open up stuff in your life that you can't open up because you're this version. But I do want to thank my man Toronto, uh, Carl, because he told Didi, Didi, you were actually about to get the upgrade for Mother's Day. <laughs> He said, you just messed it up. He was going to get it to you for Mother's Day. You messed it up. I'm like, thanks, Jerome. Appreciate you, bro. He was like, you're too quick, Didi. If you just would have waited a couple more weeks, you would have got that joke. So, so what am I telling you? I'm telling you that we are asking God for more when we want to stay one gigabyte. We're praying for more, but you one gigabyte. Let's go. Let's go move because I got I to gotta tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm going to read this in again. Just as we reset our computers to correct errors and glitches, we must reset some of our beliefs to align with the truth revealed in Christ. Not just get baptized. Not just know the beliefs. <laughs> but, but, but now we got to start removing some of our beliefs that are not in alignment with God's beliefs. Before encountering Christ, we may have to learn behaviors and beliefs contrary to his teaching. Like, we got to unlearn some stuff. Let's go to the next one. So, so the beauty is, for God so loved the world, even when we was one uh, 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 megabyte, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we were in that state, he didn't wait to give it his son when we got to a better state. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But let's go to this one. This was important. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For what I receive, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins. Praise God. Praise God. Maybe you ain't catching it. He died, meaning that you don't have to stay one a megabyte. He died for you. You don't have to stay that version of yourself. You don't have to keep saying, this is where I come from. This is the trauma that happened to me. This person did this to me. Christ is saying, you good. I died for that. So I paid the debt for that. So it's covered. So you good. Oh, come on, somebody. Um, uh, come on. So some of y'all didn't get a chance to go to, um, you, didn't, you didn't go to Disney. So I'll never forget, there was this ride called the Trine. It was supposed to be the best one. And I was with Rodney and his family, and my family were together. And Jada's a beast on that thing. I don't know how Jada learned how to do it, but Jada was on that thing because I didn't know what to do. And so they was like, well, we ain't got tickets. I was like, yo, cuz come with us. Oh, y'all not, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> they was like, we don't got no tickets. I was like, bet, come with us. And we just going to have faith that all of us getting on this ride. 
They was like, but we ain't got tickets. I was like, don't even worry about no tickets, son. It's somebody that's going to be right. Oh, y'all not hear what I'm saying? Some of you get so focused on tickets. I don't have a ticket. You don't really need a ticket. You need the person that's letting people in with the ticket. <laughs> you ain't never got to have a ticket. If you got the right person that's standing there, they can let everybody. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. So I'm telling you, you don't have the ticket to do that. But he died, so you do have a ticket to do that. Yep, I'm like, come on, y'all, let's roll. I get up to my man. My man is cool as all get out. And all of them weren't like that. He was like, what you got? Jada was like, we got the hope. We got us. <laughs> Jada like, we got us. I got the one. I'm going to hit this one. And it's for all of us. And I promise you, we, walk, we all went in. It was so crazy. Stacy was kind of standing there kind of like, yo, he put the t- He counted three. I was like, Stacy, go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> She went, my man didn't say nothing. He like, have a good time. He was looking at me like, you want to go? I was like, well, it says something about high blood pressure and y'all going 65 miles per hour. I'm good on that. I'm just going to stay down here with, I'm going to stay here with Dee Dee and little man. I'm talking, about everybody got on and had a great time. You're not hearing me. You keep going through life saying you don't have a ticket. He died for you. He already paid for it. You can have whatever you like. He already said he died for it. He died, he paid for it. He lived the life that we could not live, the sinless life, and then he came up and was like, I'm good. I'm sitting with the right hand of the Father now, so I'm interceding. So not only did I pay for it, if somebody got the right to say something to you about it, I'm going to speak up on your behalf. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Man, I was walking through that joint like we can have whatever we want. I was like, yo, we, we brought 88 people. We didn't spend over 100 grand. Say something. <laughs> I'm like, say something. We didn't spend a whole bunch of bread. These kids going to have the time of their life. I'm talking about, I was like, I dare you to say something to me. Give me that well done. Scramble those eggs with cheese. Hold a toast. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm just saying, we still going through life with our past. We're still going through life where we were born and what our circumstances were and what people told us we could and could not have and what we could and could not do. It don't make sense to be in Christ if you're going to go with the old. He said, I died for your sins, according to the scriptures. I was buried. That he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. So he said, I died. I was buried. Then I came back. Come on, somebody. You ought to be excited. Let's go to the next one. Amen. Let's go to the next one. So now we need to reset our beliefs. So that's what I want you to do today. Because you have the right to get on whatever ride you want to, now I want you to get off the ride that somebody put you on, and I want you to get on the ride that you really want to be on. I want to help somebody. Bump the relationship that you think you deserve. I want you to write down the relationship you want, and I want you to walk that out. Bump what somebody told you you could do professionally. I want you to write down what you want to do professionally, and I want you to walk that out. I, he died for you. He paid for it. So he didn't have a limit on it. He didn't say there was a limit. He said he died. He was buried. He was raised again. So you can, you, you, you can have whatever life you want. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just told y'all what I wanted. I'm, I ain't on that. I want a phenomenal relationship with my children. Why? Because I didn't have, I didn't, my father wasn't in my life. And me and my mom, because of certain circumstances, our, our blissfulness was disrupted from time to time because I was in my feelings. Come on, I'm not talking to anybody. So I ain't necessarily the dude that wants six cars. And nothing wrong with that if it's you want. But what I want is a blissful relationship, my wife, my kids. And guess what I got? Exactly what I want. That's what I want. I'm not telling you what to want. I'm just telling you what I want. I want to travel together. That's what I want. I want us all together. I want us all in the world. I wake up every day like, God, I want these babies to love you with all their heart, all their might, all their soul. Give them a a spouse that's going to love you and that's going to put you first. Like, I don't even care about them. A spouse that loves you, that's going to read the word to the kids, bring the kids to church. This is what I want. And I don't even care what they want. Y'all miss what I just said. I don't even care what they want. I'm like, I'm not interested. You not even, you go, you can get with somebody that's not God fearing and y'all ain't going to be together for long. Why? Because he heard my prayer. <laughs> my prayer going to oh, trump your little crazy prayer. I don't, if you might be looking just at somebody's body, I don't care what you're looking at. I know what I pray and I'm going to get somebody that loves the Lord and that's going to be bringing my kids to church, whether y'all beefing or not. They gonna introduce them to Christ. They gonna be your spouse. Gonna be praying for my grandbabies. 
opening up the word. Even when y'all ain't on one accord, they're going to be keeping God on one accord with them. Are you not hearing what I'm saying? I want somebody that's healthy enough that they ain't got to take care of you because they're taking care of themselves. And prayerfully, you're going to take care of yourself and y'all going to be good. Are y'all listen to me? I'm praying for what I want. You, I'm, not, I'm not living this earth just taking what somebody gave me. I could have done that without Christ. I didn't get Christ to lose. I didn't get Christ to lose. I didn't get Christ to be broke. Somebody going to tell me, are you to, uh, on that prosperity? I said, you can call, please call me a prosperity preacher. Just don't call me a poverty one. You can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me poverty. Don't call me lack. <laughs> don't lie on me. Yeah, I do want to be prosperous. I do. I want my blood pressure to be 117 over 80. I do want to be prosperous. Yep, I, I want my uh, uh, A1C to be uh, in the 50s, the 40s. Yep, I do want to be prosperous. Yep, I do want to be able to walk at 90 and play with my grandkids at 80. I do want to be prosperous. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be mentally gone. I don't want to be judging folk. I don't want to be having to talk about people like a dog. I don't want to hate. Call me prosperous. Yeah, I want to be prosperous in every part of my life. Yeah, we just sent a group. I was, uh, I was in uh, 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 Delta Skyline. Uh, the dude was Puerto Rican, so I started doing a little Spanish with him. He said, man, you ever been to Puerto Rico? I said, not only have I been, I just sent a group of students. Matter of fact, I sent one a month ago, and we just sent another group of students from Grand Rapids to Puerto Rico. I'll call me prosperous. I'm sending kids to Dubai. I'm sending kids to Disney. Call me prosperous. But don't call me broke. <laughs> Call me prosperous. Been married 34 years, happily married, blissful. Call me prosperous. Don't call me broke. And I don't want to be with broke people and poverty-minded people. Y'all go ahead and do your own thing. Y'all have your own little community. Have a good time. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. <laughs> and the last time I checked, he said that I pray that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Or just don't call me poverty. I ain't seen him say that to me in the word. Don't call me lack, because that ain't in the Bible. Don't call me that. <laughs> you, go ahead and call, you can say prosperity as much as you want, and I pray for you. If you think it's a bad word, shame on you. But nobody says nothing about us being last academically in the black community. Nobody talks about us being last in terms of health. Nobody talks about the fact that we can't have kids at the worst rate. Nobody talks about us dying and going to jail at such an early... We don't mind... We don't mind lack. We don't mind poverty. When we start talking about getting on the other side of it, now we got problems. Nobody talk about our babies can't pass tests and they can't get in college. But as soon as we talk about being in good health, <laughs> now you a prosperity. Call me prosperity, but don't call me broke. <laughs> don't call me busted and disgusted. Don't call me evil. Don't call me mean. You're going to see a smile on my face. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, man, you should have been in Disney seeing those kids' faces. I said, if this would, power, if this would prosperity get, give me as much as possible because we're going to keep taking them. I told him, Pastor said, <laughs> Pastor said, I said, where we going next? Pastor said, Dubai, 2026. I said, let, let go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> we going where? We going to Dubai. Let's go. How many we taking? Whosoever will. Get your stuff together. Let him come. Don't come with that poverty mindset because we ain't going to be over there. I'm talking about Jamie. We left. All of us left with all kind of snacks still on our. We, we left with all kind of meals still on our. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our cup runneth over. So, 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 so resetting our beliefs. Just give me a couple minutes. This Resurrection Sunday, let us reflect on Sabbath. I apologize. Let us reflect our beliefs and dare to reset those that do not reflect Christ's love, grace, and truth. Let us reset our beliefs about forgiveness, humility, compassion, and love, and embrace the transformative power of Christ's resurrection in our lives. So I want to show y'all something. This is the first. God told me, God told me, I'm going to pull out my paper, and I want y'all to pull out something to write with right now. Grab your phone, because we're going to really do this exercise right now, and then I'm going to let you get out of here. We're going to do the actual exercise. You're not going to hear me preach. We're going to do the actual, the actual exercise. God said we have to reset our beliefs. Today, because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we can reset some of our beliefs right now. I want you to get ready. So here go the first one. I want to show you a meme to show you the first one. Amen. She said Ryan's buffet would still be open if y'all parents hadn't lied about y'all age. 
I'm just, can we just keep it 100? We got to change our belief system. I just want to show you. Amen. This is a belief system right here. Ryan's is closed right now because we got a poverty mindset. I'm just being real. We got a poverty mindset. You think she playing? She ain't playing. Ryan's is closed. Why? Because Christians went in there lying about your baby ain't been 10. Your baby ain't been five in five years. They're in there eating for free. You done got three babies in there, all of them above age. But we call ourselves Christians, but we go to restaurants and lie. Why? Because we have a survivor's mindset. We're going in and lying. We're going in the stores lying. We think we got to lie to get God, what God has for us. We think we got to be manipulative to get what God has for us. We don't think we can do it the right way. Praise God. Now, I don't wish nobody demise, but I, I promise you I'm grateful, especially for some of the young men who follow me who always want to do the worldly stuff. And when they see people in the world doing worldly stuff and they see how you can build with one hand and that sucker come crashing down. And sometimes when I do it the Christian way, it seems like it's taking forever. It does take forever when you land bricks. It does take forever when you land a foundation. It does. If you just want to put up a straw, you can put up straw quick. You just want to put up a foundation that ain't strong, you can build that quick. But when them winds come, when the storm comes, and I love it because you know the folks that celebrate with you when you're doing good. As soon as the devil, everybody, don't know, ain't nobody. Yep, this go our problem right here. Ryan Buffet, still be open. We had not lied. Hallelujah. I want to keep that one up while I do this one. I just want to, I, I just want, you know, so I just want us to see, right? So, 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 so here's mine. So here's what God told me. I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I got it right. So first of all, for a scripture reference, God says, if you want to see how serious this is, read uh, Genesis 37, the story of Joseph. So, so the first thing God did when God showed Joseph his dream, he gave him a reset, meaning what? He took him completely away from his environment. He said, there's no way for you to be who I call you to be here with your father, here with your brother. One, your father loves you too much, so he can let you get away with murder. You a grown man out here uh, uh, taking notes on what your brother's doing. You should be working too. You of age. But he on that Ryan's Buffet boy. I'm just saying he on the Ryan's Buffet. Jacob is a man of God, but he lying. He letting his son get away with murder because he love him. Bro, why are you grown and you out there taking notes of what your brother's doing? You shouldn't have no pen and no pad. You should be out there with your brother's working. You of age. But Jacob loved you because he loved your mama more than anybody else. So now you don't got to work like everybody else. He not, it's not right. I'm going to tell y'all something. You do stuff that ain't right. I don't care who you are. God going to fix it. He out there with a coat. Not only is he not working, he got on a coat that says, I ain't got to work. Y'all got to work. I don't got to work. I'm telling on every last one of y'all for not. There's like, okay, the devil is a lie. I bet, I bet you you won't make it home with that pen and that pad. I bet you won't make it back to daddy. They try to kill him, but remember what I told you. When God died for you, God's got you. Is that all right? So number one, Jacob loved him too much, and he wouldn't discipline him. Number two, he couldn't stay in that environment because his brothers hated him too much for him to grow. God said, we got to go. For some of you, write this down. I know you're going to hate to hear this because it's uncomfortable. Some of you need to leave the environment you're in. You need to reset from the environment you're in. You need a total reset. I'm telling y'all honest truth, I'm, and I mean this with all my heart. I would still be at Bethel Seventh-day Adventist Church today if I had my choice. I thought it was the worst thing that ever happened. I'm like, God, what are you doing? How I get fired from a church? You know what you got to do to get fired from a church? I'm like, God, you going to put that on my resume? I done got fired? <laughs> I didn't get fired from uh, Wendy's. I worked at Wendy's and they ain't fired me. I know I was trash at Wendy's. <laughs> and they held on to you, boy. I was doing the right thing here and I got fired? He said, you're not getting fired, son. This is a reset. Where I'm taking you, this environment is not conducive to taking you there. And you're too stupid to leave. I saw all the signs and I was fighting them. People would call me, hey, they meeting against you. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to preach better. (laughs) I'm going to get more organized. (laughs) I'm going to, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to be better and you're not going to want me to. 
God said, you get, how are you going to get better in an environment where they don't even want you? Now, I'm talking to somebody in the room. You're trying to get better for somebody that don't even want you. It don't, mean I'm, it don't mean I'm not making mistakes, but I promise you I'm in an environment where people, when I make a mistake, are trying to encourage me to get better, not get rid of me. Didi like, yeah, you got some growing to do, but I ain't about to send you out there and let no other woman get the benefits of all this work I worked on. I'm about to get the benefits. <laughs> she ain't about to get blessed. I did all this work. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to tell you about yourself, but I'm not telling you about yourself to leave. I'm telling you about yourself to stay. Okay, so here's, here was my reset. God said, you got to get out of your feelings. Your belief system is how you feel, and you got to get in your principles. So in my marriage, I was the fun guy. Dee Dee has legions on her brain right now because I was always the fun guy. She absorbed the stress because she was the one that took stuff serious. And I never supported her in it. I just like, when we go into the movies. I was a feelings dude. I just want to make sure in our marriage we have fun. I just want to make sure we have a good time. My credit score was like 500. I didn't even know that affected us. So when people say, Didi, you never changed your last name. Well, in the beginning, she couldn't. Because if she would have took my last name, she would have took my 500 credit score. And that would have been detrimental to our marriage. So she had to keep her last name because she had a great credit score. And because she had a good history in her bank account. I, I, I was in my feelings. Like, who cares about bills? We getting late. I'm talking about, they didn't give me the money to go pay it some kind of way. I didn't miss the bill, uh, the company to pay the bill, and I didn't went to the mall. And I didn't bought the Green Bay Packer hat to go with my Green Bay Packer shirt to go with the green sneakers that I had. And I'm on campus with no lights, but like, ah, can y'all see me? I'm looking good. <laughs> No, it was my belief system was, as long as you feel good, it don't really matter what's really going on. It don't matter that you're flunking out of school, as long as when you go back home to Detroit Center, you look like you're doing good. I was in my feelings. And it wasn't until I shifted, it was like, I need to get out of my feelings, and I need to get into facts. I need to get into principles. So now when I wake up, I don't ask Didi how you feel. I asked Didi, uh, what do we need to get done today? What's on the agenda? What's, what do we need to, well, we got seven things. Then I know after the seventh one, then I can introduce fun. <laughs> so I'm looking at, okay, we can finish this by one, and we can have fun from 115. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm just being real. When I used to wake up before, I just was like, hey, let's have worship. Let's pray. Let's go have fun. And then I'm upset with why she in the hospital, why she going through what she going through, because she's stressed. Because she the one that's got to make sure all the bills are taken care of. She got to figure out where all the paperwork is. They called me, Mr. Thomas, we got a big opportunity for you, bro. We just going to need this document. I'm like, hey, D. She at work. I'm like, D, hold up for it. Tell your job, hold on for a minute. I need that paperwork. Where's them documents? She's like, go in the drawer, open up. Two, five, six, you'll see a red with the red. Open that one in the back. It'll have your name on it and that document. I'm like, bet. I come home. She come home. Where's the paperwork? I'm like, I don't know. I took it out. I gave them the number. I don't know. I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> She's like, at least you could have put it back. I'm like, we good. I'm finished with it. I did what I needed to do. <laughs> put up. <laughs> I said, what? put up. Like, why are you tripping? <laughs> you, are you mad because I ain't put it up? I just got a gig. <laughs> Just being real. And I was wondering what was up. Why ain't my marriage super blissful? Why are we having these bumps in the road? Because we having these bumps in the road. Because we having feelings. All we doing is roller coaster. <laughs> we ain't never doing no put your belt on. Think, he go to sign. If you got high blood pressure, don't get on. If you're not a certain height, you can't get on. I wasn't on none of that. Everybody just get on. And if you fall off and we get sued, it's okay. We had fun. Then I was in my feelings. So when Didi would correct me about things that needed to be corrected so that I could become number one in the world in my speaking, I took it personal. And so now our relationship is disrupted because you're telling me what's bad. You're risking, your, you're risking me treating you a certain way because you're telling me the truth 
so that I could do better. I'm too stupid to see you risking that to tell me when you could just be quiet and not say nothing and let me get on stage and bomb. But I'm in my feelings. Oh, you don't never cheer me on. You don't never say nothing pop. I don't come home. I don't never hear. Give me an E. Give me an R. Give me ah. Uh, give me a C. What's this, Eric? She's like, I'm not interested in cheering you on. I'm, I'm trying to make you number one in the world. I just signed a deal, not even to speak, but to be the only African American male in a new company sitting on the board with a chance to make eight figures. I only got to show up once a year. That didn't happen because of my charisma. That happened because Diddy made me structured. They didn't go, charisma, we want the charismatic black dude. They was like, oh, we see the structure charismatic. All these years, I'm fighting. Do it right now. You think you, why are you telling me what to do? I do it right now. My mama ain't, you ain't my mama. I, I know you didn't let her finish her job, so I kind of am. I kind of am. I don't want to be, but you left home at 16. I kind of am your mama because you don't know where your birth certificate is. You don't know where your past. You don't know. I'm kind of your mama. But sometimes it's okay to be your mama when you call me and ask me for what stuff is. But when I tell you, now all of a sudden you got an attitude about it. I'm not number one in the world, y'all, because I'm charismatic. I'm number one in the world because I got out of my feelings and now I understand principle. So the reason why you're telling me to do it now, Didi, is because 90% of the time, if I don't do it now, I don't do it. That's why it took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. Because it's not that I can't do it, but I, don't, I have all these great ideas. I got all this stuff that could change the world, but I seem not to ever get to it. Some of y'all in this room, you know how much money you got inside of you? You know how dope you are? You got a dope idea. You ain't never done nothing with it. You might even wrote it down. It never got executed. So it doesn't matter that it's dope. It doesn't matter. And then we get an attitude when somebody say, well, what happened to that paper you showed me a year ago? Oh, you just trying to, I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm trying to help you to execute. You wrote it down. You never did nothing with it. So I was in my feelings and now I'm disrupting bliss. I only got one more. So, so business. No, I'm sorry. Let me go with this one. So because I didn't want to be in principle and I wanted to be in my feelings, I was never direct. I'm direct now. Y'all know what I realized? When you're not direct, you're not even talking. I'm just being real. You know why I never wanted to be direct? Because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. But now you hurt mine. <laughs> I told you no and you asked me three other times. So I got to be direct. No. No, I can't. Somebody said you're going... You're taking the kids to Dubai. Can I go to Dubai? No. God did not tell me to take grown people. He told me to take kids. God did not tell me to take church kids to Dubai. He told me to take kids from the hood. When we went to Disney World, he told me to take who? The kids from the church. It's not my money. It's his money. No. And if you got an attitude, go tell God to take you to Dubai. That's not my responsibility. You come with me asking me for stuff because you don't want to talk to God about it. Go ask God. Don't come to me. This is the vision God gave me. If you got a vision, go tell God to do your vision. But don't come in my vision telling me how to do my vision. And so God said, you're going to have to learn how to be direct. You're beating around the bush. You're not really saying what you want. You're going in circles. You're not saying nothing because nobody knows what you're saying. When you direct, it might hurt, but it's direct is direct. It's, no, it's a bunch of clarity in direct. Watch this one, business, y'all. Man, I'd be so much further in business. I hired people to pay their bills. My, my, my. I hired people because I hated the fact that I didn't have independence and I wanted people to have their independence. I hired people because I wanted people to be able to get up when they wanted to get up, go to bed when they wanted to get up, but work when they wanted to work. I, I didn't hire people for business. I hired people for feelings. And then when I don't get excellence, I got an attitude. It's like, that's not what you hired for. You got exactly what you hired for. Watch this. When I heard Magic Johnson say, you got to pick. I'm number one. I got to pick number one. I ain't had no problems with that. I'm doing that right now. But... I had a problem with making other people step up to the plate and being excellent because of how I thought it might make them feel. And God said, son, if you have 
put yourself in a position to be number one, then you, you deserve to be surrounded by number one. Again, I hire to help people, pay their bills, give them freedom, independence, to experience the American dream. But guess what? I should have hired for a return on my investment. I should have hired to make money. That's what business is. If, if you're not making money, it's a nonprofit. So I want y'all to do me a favor. Last slide. I want y'all to do me a favor before we leave. I want you to question some of your beliefs and say, is this biblical or did I get this from the culture that I grew up in, the neighborhood I grew up in, my best friends, people that I'm close to? Can I find this belief in the Bible? I guarantee you, because y'all already know who going to, after church, who going to riots. You already know who going. Right after church, you know who going to riots. So how did you lie about your child's age? That's not biblical. You know how you lied about it? Because it's a part of your culture. And somebody told you, hey, Ryan's just open. They got free food for kids. Under six. If you under six, you got, you got, oh, and don't, hey, you know how we are. We will even pr produce fake documents if we need to. Oh, I'm not, y'all know I'm telling the truth. We can get fake documents to say we a certain age. Now Ryan's had to shut down. And not only did they shut down, anybody ever been to one of these buffets before? But if you ever been there before, because we don't follow principles, we let our babies put about 18 days worth of food on the plate and they don't even eat it. And we ain't saying nothing to them about it. You know that ain't right. But you ain't saying nothing to them. They got four, five plates full of food. You know they're not about to eat that. Now, if that was your money and your business, you'd have an attitude. But because it ain't your business, you're going with your culture and not the Bible. You can't find, lie about age, and uh, have a bunch of food on your plate that you're not going to eat. Come on, that's some new school stuff. Y'all know when we grew up, grandma would... Not only would you get in trouble for not eating all your food, you couldn't leave the table. <laughs> Bump trouble. You couldn't be, your grandma would be like, do me a favor now. You can get as much as you like. But I promise you, if you get two pieces of chicken, you, when I come back, you better eat two pieces of chicken. Or get one piece, and if you eat that piece and you're still hungry, you can go get another one. But if you put two pieces on there and you don't eat, not only are you getting your butt whipped, you're not going to see the light of day. You're going to be in this house. Am I talking to anybody? Now nah, it's like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Let him put five pieces of chicken on there. He don't got to eat but half for one. Meanwhile, the business is going broke because we're wasting food. I'm just saying when we leave... If our biblical principles match our daily principles, we take off. The problem is we got one set of principles that we say we believe. We got another set of principles we actually acting out. Imagine what our lives would look like if we weren't going by the hustle mentality, only the holy mentality. Imagine if we weren't going by survivor mode, but scripture mode. All right, last one. Ephesians 4. And 20, uh, 22 and 24. I'm going to let you get out of here. You were taught, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say it with me. You were taught. Good. One more time. You were taught. We're not talking about just the, the principles, the biblical principles that the church loves to, you got to be fully submersed and keep the Sabbath and don't eat the, I'm not talking about the, I'm talking about the ones you were taught and you live by daily. You were taught with regard to your former way of life. Put off the old self. Put away feelings, Eric, and live by principle, which is being corrupt by his deceitful desires. Lying and saying uh, he five when he nine. Which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. You ain't never even raised my man. He on your taxes. He's a dependent. He ain't no dependent. You ain't never took care of him. How you get on your taxes? It's deceitful. It's not right. Man, I tell you, it's hard living with Didi, but principles are, they, they, they don't. I told y'all, we went home recently and Jada got a second job and it looked, like one, it looked like one day she came home, went to bed, and Didi pulled her to the side and said, hold up now, I seen you went to bed now. I don't know your little schedule, but I know you work for ETA and you collecting the check. 
So either you're working for your dad or you're not working for him. If you're not working for him because you're working for the other company, then stop getting paid. But you're going to curse us if you're taking money and you're not doing the work. My wife could have just overlooked it. She working right now. She don't got time. Diddy was like, mm -mm, no, we living by principle. I don't care nothing about your feelings. You're not going to put a curse on our family taking money you ain't working for. You're not going to be deceitful. If the government look, we're not going to lie and say you work when you didn't work. So you got to figure it out. Right, do you have time? I know. All I know is the next day, I'm like, where's Jada? She was at Starbucks after work <laughs> with her computer getting it in. We got to stop saying we Christians, but we're not following this stuff. Today is a day of reset. All the stuff we know we're doing that ain't right, it's time to reset. It don't make us evil. It don't make us bad people. Today is not about just going. Jesus died for our sins. This resurrection weekend, it's time to celebrate. No, it's time to reset. All the errors and the glitches, as painful as they are to correct and as inconvenient as they are, we got to live by principle. We really appreciate you spending your day with us. And we look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday evenings at 6 for Wednesday Night Word with Pastor T.J. Tyus. For all of our announcements, upcoming events, and special programming, please visit our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Your tangible support of this ministry makes all the difference in the world, and we can't thank you enough for your commitment. If you'd like to support this ministry, please use our cash app at dollar sign APOC Global. If you prefer a more traditional approach, visit our website at www.apocministry.org. On behalf of pastors Thomas and Tyus, their wives and families, and the whole of your A Place of Change ministry family, until we meet again, be blessed.